What up, guys? Welcome to the Audacity Network, and welcome to another episode of Pearl Daily, where I cover this week's treachery, debauchery, and craziness. Guys, I didn't want to do this today. I was tired of talking about this Nolichick. I was over it. I was done. I, I, I thought, what else can we talk about this week? I need to move on. But I feel a sense of responsibility to set the record straight when misinformation happens, all right? I, I feel the need to do it. And if all these simps are going to defend this OnlyFans model to the grave, sorry, Tim Pool, <laughs> if all these simps are going to defend this prostitute to the grave, then I'll be the villain. I'll be the villain if that's what you want. I'll be the villain if that's what you need. I need to write this song. Guys, seriously, seriously. I'm tired of this. I am tired of the simping. So... Today, what I wanted to talk about is I wanted to talk about the archetypes that I see in church. So you may or may not know that 50% of young men that started attending church in their 20s leave church by the time they're in their 30s. And if you go into any church across the board, and I can just say this anecdotally, I've been to Catholic churches. I've been to non-denominational churches. What the hell church did we go to the other day, Blessing? What's it called? Pentecostal. I've been to Pentecostal churches. I've been to churches all across the world, U.S., U.K. I'm by no means a Bible thumper. I'm not a preacher. Please do not. Blessing's a preacher. Blessing, you want to preach? Not today. <laughs> um, but there's certain, I look for trends and patterns. I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't really give a shit what this chick does with her life. But I look for trends and patterns. And the trends and patterns that I have seen in the last couple of years is that most churches have completely lost their way. I see this in Catholic churches. I see this Christian in Christian churches. You know, I have friends that are Orthodox and say the same thing. Over and over and over again, everyone tells me that I am wrong, that this is not true. And over and over and over again, I find myself to be exactly right and correct. <laughs> You know, um, there is an epidemic in this country. There is an epidemic of wokeness coming into the churches. And it comes through the churches through liberal, feminist, trad women. Trad women tend to be no different than feminists. They tend to actually be worse because they are wolves in sheep's clothing. And they use God to justify poor behavior and bad decisions. So today, I wanted to go through the archetypes of people that I see in the church. Now, as a disclaimer, this is just my personal experience. I'm not saying that my, I have all the answers. Maybe your experience is different. But luckily, I created a show that I can talk about what I have experienced. And... <clears throat> In churches, really, you see three main archetypes. The simps, the pimps, and the born-again virgins. Yes, one second, guys. I want to pull up the chat so I can see what you guys are talking about. By the way, guys, if you do want to support the channel, please sign up for a membership at theaudacitynetwork.com. That's theaudacitynetwork.com. We are really, really struggling um, because we have just been informed that we cannot get monetized for another three months. All right. I have lost three. This, I'm on my third Instagram, eight TikToks. Um, I've been demonetized on YouTube. And it seems like no matter what I do, they just demonetize me again. Um, they've also demonetized Troy Francis. He's another one. And Troy was demonetized because I have appeared on his channel. That's it. You know, and by signing up for our memberships, you can support our divorce documentary. 
you know, right now we're trying to save funds to go to America. There's a really big guest that we have and we have to use funds in order to get them. And so we're really trying to raise those funds on top of that. We're trying to get a new office in London. We want to move to a bigger warehouse and we really just need, you know, help if we can. Okay. Enough of my plug. So back to the church. All right, so in the church, you have three main archetypes, the simps, the pimps, and the born-again virgin. Remember, only 3% of women across the board, maybe less, are waiting until marriage for a religious reason. So let's not pretend that virgins are rampant in the church. They're not. So again, that leaves us the simps, the pimps, and the born-again virgins. What happens if you have the born-again virgins? These are women that see themselves as God's police. Very rarely do they do the things that bring glory to God, but they love to talk about how holy and trad they are. Generally, they have zero humility converted yesterday, and their favorite hobby is telling people what to do, including their husbands. Many of these women are truly predators that the church welcomes with open arms. The church loves a redemption story. So they often overlook the fact that these women, they, they often overlook all the facts with these women and simply give them speaking positions. You typically cannot see Christianity in these women by the way they behave, but they typically tout it like it is the latest fashion trend or handbag. These women are the women that will tell you you are not a real Christian if you do not do the behavior that she deems appropriate. Again, they view themselves as God's police. It is their job to the police. It is their job to police the behavior of everybody. That is their job. These women are typically condescending, bitchy, and selfish. They generally only let their husbands lead if on things that do not matter, like where they go to dinner, but are completely controlling when it comes to the important things like parenting styles or where their kids go to school. Even though these women are supposed to be quiet in the back of the church, they love injecting their opinion into everything. They are the CEO of trad and they will die for the sisterhood. They love to point out that they faith harder than you. They love it. They are the gods of, of faith. They, they have the best faith. All right. Now there's a couple tells that you can, you know, tell who these women are. Um, one of them is, I'll let him lead. How do you let a man lead? What you give him, you give it to him. That, that doesn't make any sense. Men that lead, just lead. Okay, so I, there's an article here that shows really the mindset of the born-again virgin chicks that I see. Oftentimes, these women have a crazy past, but that doesn't stop them from denouncing and shaming men for doing behavior they don't like. There is a reason young men are leaving the church, and it is because they are tired of seeing former strippers and corn stars tell them how to be men. That's always how it ends. A real man does this. A real man does that. It is always them picking the behavior that they like and trying to pick how men should behave. Well, women are supposed to be in the back of the church. And guys, I want you to pay attention to this Nala situation. If you didn't know, Nala is the corn star that Michael Knowles brought on his channel. This corn star is in the born again virgin archetype. And what you are going to see is the enabling behaviors from everyone around her. But we're going to get to that later. First, I want to talk about God's police. All right, so this is an article. Can you pull it up? Blessing. Deep down, women still accept that it is their role to be God's police. In 1975, when The Damned Whores and God's Police was published, it did not occur to me that I would have such an opportunity four decades later to look back on the world I have described and analyzed. But here we are doing just that. The first question everyone asks, how much has changed since 1975? The second question, are we better off today than we were then? And I can say this with confidence. Yes, we are. I cannot summarize. I would summarize how I see things. We have changed a lot, but we have not changed enough. The, art, the Australia article I wrote in the early 1970s has changed. It is not totally beyond recognition, but I expect people today might be astonished about what, 
might be astonished to learn what life used to be like for young women. Even as late as 1975, there were so many things that women were unable to do. Some of these restrictions were self-imposed. And remember, this is a Christian chick writing this. Self-imposed cultural restraints, but in many cases, they were underpinned by the absence of laws to afford, enforce equality. Even though in 1975, we were three years into the Whitlam government, the first federal government to commit and legislate women's equality, there was still no federal anti-discrimination legislation. It seems unbelievable today, but until the late 1870s, it was perfectly legal, legal in Australia for women to be treated as inferiors. Jobs were classified by sex and advertising for men and boys, women's and women and girls. So again, women, these, these born again virgins, they get into church and they say there's no difference, men and women. Women are not the weaker vessel. We're equal, right? Women had no legal redress. If, for example, your boss asked you to sit on his knee to take direction. Like, who does that? Who? Come on. I skimmed through. Hold on. There's a part I wanted to read. All right. So now she's arguing. A small example. The sign on the toilet doors of federal parliament had to be repainted. Men or women instead of senators or members. A bigger one. Deborah Wardley seeking a job. Now the one an anti-discrimination lawsuit. And that's the other thing you're going to notice. Women get into an industry and they sue. They always sue. Oh my God, this is longer than I thought. I'm trying to remember what part this was. Sorry, guys, I should. Um... Hold on one second. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> And we have a recent confirmation of this view of a woman is still, if not the organizing principle of the country. Take the example as our first female prime minister. See, this is freaking. But this woman basically, guys, you can, you can take it down. <clears throat> this woman basically writes a, a, a book about how she thinks that <laughs> women are meant to be God's police. Imagine the audacity. Men must feel walking into a church and having a former corn star lecture them about how to be a man. You know, I'm going to get to that later. So we're going to talk about what the born again virgins tend to do in church. Now, again, this does not mean this is all women. If you go to church and it doesn't apply, it's called let it fly. <clears throat> Step one. Do corn, stripping, or some sort of crazy sexual activity. Step two, say sorry. Step three, join church and social media. Step four, preach in women's groups, ministries, and online. Step five, marry a young guy who does not know matter, better. And step six, make millions as a Jesus influencer. Or in women's ministry. What I have noticed about the born again virgins is they can never sit quiet in the back of the church. It is always, they need to be the center of attention. They miss all the simps they used to have. So now it's time to go and preach. That's what we need. Sex worker preachers, yes. So next we have the pimps. Now the pimps are the men that generally led some sort of ministry. They are often in band leaderships or even at times the pastor. Blessing. <laughs> Sorry. These are the men that often, that often have experience with women and use the church because that is where all the hoes go. <laughs> these men are few. These men are few, but often date at least half of the single attractive women in the congregation. These men know that the women in the church are easier, not harder. These men are grateful to the simps because the simps are the cleanup guys after they are done. So I have a video of just an example of what we would have going on. All right, pull this up. All right, so this guy caught his wife cheating. You guys think I make this stuff up? 
And so let's see, wife caught cheating with a pastor at the hotel. Yes. Location, Mr. Jones. Oh, wait, let me double check that my audio is. Now go back. Old jurisdiction that would know about. We I'm don't have to do that. We don't, we don't have to yeah, so basically, long story short, I'm over here at the Holiday Inn Express. Um, I'm here because uh, my wife's been cheating on me. Been cheating on me with our pastor, Pastor Leon Mitchell. Yeah, uh, only way I found out, I went through her phone last night. She left it unlocked. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I seen that she had been talking to him for like the last six weeks or two months or so. Yeah, so they've been involved heavily. So she doesn't know that I, I went through a phone, and I seen that they were supposed to meet up today at the, at the Holiday Inn Express. So, I, you know, I made it over here. I've been following her. She's in, she's in the back somewhere. She can park the car trying to be slick so no one would notice it. Notice she's at the hotel or something like that. But to me, I'm just waiting on her, and she's coming from the back. So whenever she come, comes to the front, I'm going to I'm confront her about it because, you know, that that's not you know. I do everything for this. See, there it is. He does. What, what is the simp, guys? It's just, it is the act of submitting to women. That's what simping is. It is men that defer to women's authority. I do everything for this woman. Women only love men that we do everything for. That's it. I pay all the bills and everything, and she doesn't need for anything. Now she's over here sleeping with, around with the pastor out of all people, you know what I'm saying? It is, there she is right, there she is right there. Now, again, the simps tend to be dorky, awkward men. And the pimps tend to be charismatic, charming men in churches. Done. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, I'm on to you. Yeah, let's get that. They're saying this is an exception. Don't worry, guys. I have more than one receipt. You think I came with one? Oh, no. The Holiday Inn Express, huh? Yeah, my wife, huh? You're my wife, huh? We get the Holiday Inn Express. What you doing here, huh? What are you doing? Charles. You, you, it, you mean the pastor, huh? You mean Pastor Mitchell? Yeah, you can say counseling. Yeah, counseling. Counselor. You come out stupid. You know, you're not playing with me. You're not stupid, girl. You've been messing with the pastor. Okay. You've been I messing like with the pastor. That. You're a big. Like you're a big. No. What is it? No. What is it like then, huh? What is it like then? I don't trust me. I don't trust you. I'm ready to see your phone. Let me see your phone. It's cold to get in. 8899. What's going on? All right. What is, what is going on? What, what you got? Charles. Come on, we'll get, we'll get off. We'll, 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 all right. all right. You got a, a, a naked picture over here? Charles. What it's the f is he sending you a naked picture for? What is he sending you a naked picture for? What, what is it? <laughs> she said it could have been an accident. <laughs> what does the message say? Oh, uh, no, I'll be there. Can you bring me? Chill. Yes, that's fine. I'll be there. That's from the day. I'm just talking about last night. Come on, no, we're going over there. I mean, you in the pool. And I want to show you guys. Come on. Oh, I don't yeah. think we got other gonna fight back and forth. I want to show you guys the pastor. And you'll start to notice these archetypes in church. Again, the simps tend to be dorky men, where the pimps tend to be charming, charismatic men. That, that's that's at, a, at a nutshell, because pimps think about themselves first. They do not think about other people. They think about themselves. Maybe God, some of the, some of the pimps are... are do you submit to God in church? Others don't, you know. Everyone come up. Yeah, don't hide now. Don't hide now. Don't hide now. Look at you. Don't hide now. Oh, oh. I let you. You're cheating with the pastor, man. I can't believe I'm going to hide. 320. Go ahead. All right, now let's show you guys. Right here. Stupid, man. I'll tell you, you have everything in the world. You f it up. This is stupid. You look like you dress. What's, up? What's going on, Pastor? There you go. In decent shape, charming, charismatic. I can't see what he looks like, but I'll just guess he's handsome. What's going on, Pastor? What's your name? Team Surprise. Huh? You're expecting my wife. You're expecting you expect me also, huh? You're expecting me also, huh? What's going on? What's going on with you and my wife? What's going on with you and my wife? What the hell is going on with you and my wife? Oh, come on. Go ahead and cut that shit out, man. Come on, Pastor. What's going on with you and my wife, man? Man, you've been around my fan because I'm exposing you. You, you've been around my fan. I've been around your lovely wife, man. Come on, man. You ain't got to mess with my wife, man. Come on, man. Stop putting that camera in my face. Give me my phone, man. I'm not giving you nothing. 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 I'm not
So you know I'm a man of God. I don't know if that's the right answer in this situation. I'm just being honest. Listen, what? You're a man of God. There's, Charles, there's nothing going on with me. That's adultery, Pastor. Pastor, that's adultery. If you mess around with a married woman, you don't know. You got the relationship. What was the reason? I didn't call myself to help you guys. Pastor, what was the reason behind the naked pictures? I saw the pictures. Yeah, the naked pictures today, man. Come on. You seen our wife pictures, man? Come on, man. Come on, come on. I'm not before you talk about the rest of the congregation. Bishop Jones and the whole jurisdiction that would know about it. I'm going to do that. You know, we, we don't have to do that. We're doing it. We don't have to do that. I don't want to do anything. Hey, you know, we're taking the message. I want to go. I just want to get my phone and go. Give me my phone. You know, you messed up my marriage. How about if I messed up your marriage? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Let me call. Let me call first lady. Let me call first lady. Oh, hell no. Yeah, let me call first lady. You don't have to do that. I'm calling you. We don't have to do that. Yeah, I'm calling you. Give me my phone. I'm trying. He won't give me my phone back. You got alcohol. You got going on, man? Give me my phone, You're not getting nothing. You're not getting nothing. What's your name on the phone? What do you have her name say? I'm not telling you. What do you have her name say? All right, you guys get the idea. But Pearl's just making it up. Pearl just... It's not the simps, the pimps, and the pastors. I mean... It's not like... And, and you know, I what I hear often, too, I hear... Sometimes I hear some stuff where they say, Pearl... That is just in the app, in in the black community in the U.S. That's what I hear. It's just just them, right? That's that's until hold on. Yeah, Carl Lentz in the Secrets of Hill song. was caught having an inappropriate relationship with his nanny. Pull this up. Yeah, so no, same thing here. I'm going to pull up. All right, go back down for one second. I'm going to show you guys who this is. No, not at all. Not at all. Totally happens. This guy. Yeah, I, I love that. I love how people know me from like, that's what's cool about going to your hometown though, because people know you. You can't fake anything in your hometown. Not at so, all. like, when people see me, they're like, okay, I used to be an atheist, but you, I'm interested mm -hmm. because you can't fake where you're from, what you, who you are. And so, when people see my life, there's no explanation for it other than maybe what he believes is real because he's not that good. He's that, not that anything. That whole concept of potential is interesting because you never can quite live up to it because you don't really know what it is. I guess you might have your own goals and your own things that you right. want to accomplish, but most of the time, potential is based off what people say about you after the fact. And, yeah. and you kind of addressed that in the Own the Moment chapter when you said that trendsetters and moguls and true pioneers were never really accepted or appreciated in their time. Ever. Ever. And they never will be. You know, like Colin Cap, for instance. And the issue you get with a lot of pastors is many don't go into it for the right reasons. Not you, Blessing. You're awesome. Now, <laughs> but, but many pastors go into it because they want to be God. They want to be godlike. They love the attention. I mean, I'm sure Blessing knows. I mean, you know all the tings love the pastors, right, Blessing? Man, oh, man. <laughs> they love someone on the pulpit. They love a man on stage preaching. And, you know, oftentimes these men pander. They only demonize male sin. They will do entire sermons. Plus, you don't do this, right? Well, Pearl, don't put me on the spot. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's about Collins here. <laughs> okay. Um, they will do entire sermons about male sin. You know, they'll talk about how evil corn is. But I've never heard a, a pastor talk about women that are whores. In fact, I, only I've done this. <laughs> I have never, I've never seen a pastor do it. If anything, what I hear them say to the whores is that you can be saved and find God. But yet they condemn the corn. The corn is evil and awful and terrible. Even in the interview with Michael Knowles, he told a corn star, that her boyfriend was the red flag. Are you effing kidding me? <laughs> okay, you know, next we're going to go to 
All right, so then those are the pimps. I just want to give you guys an example. Next, we have the simps. The definition of a simp is a man who submits to a woman. Church is conducted generally on women's terms. Life is generally lived on their women's terms. He, the house is decorated how she wants it. They live where she wants. He works as much as she wants. The simps are men that generally do not know how women work. They generally are naive men that have only been with a couple of women. These men are in, these men are encouraged to buckle up and marry the born again virgins. It is phrased as their duty. They must step up to the plate. These are the men that brag that their wives made them jump through a bunch of hoops to be with them. The pimps are aware that women who like you do not make you jump through hoops to be with you and are laughing at these simps that are wifing them up. These men tend to use self-deprecating humor and put their wives on a pedestal. And the problem is you get in these churches, they encourage young women to choose simps that they will never be attracted to. And then the second a pimp comes along, the woman cheats. The simps are the ones that defend the born again virgins to the grave because they do not know better. They either do not know better, many of them married young and have no experience with women, or they know that their wife is the same as the OF models that they are defending. So in protection of their wife, they have to rationalize it somehow. These are the men that brag about their wives being their better half, and they attribute their purpose to woman, which is a very bad plan considering they tend to marry born again virgins. <laughs> Oh, not this one. Sorry. Oh, the next not, this one. Talk about not this one. Sorry. All right. So an example I have right here. You, I think, were. Is an ex a perfect example. Pull this up. This is nine years ago. Megan Good. What are the signs, people? You, I think, were like the first ones to really out of Hollywood start talking about <laughs> it. Well, you were. Yeah. What made you decide to go there? Because you didn't have to tell people what was happening in your bedroom, but you did. Or not happening. <laughs> Eventually happening. Eventually happening, but not right away. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> right. We had to wait. <laughs> you know, I think we just wanted to share because uh, relationships are so hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, truth be told, there's not a lot of guidance out there. And so we wanted to share our truth in yeah. that waiting to have sex was a critical part of the healthy foundation of our marriage and relationship. And we both were doing it independently. You know, I had yeah. been doing it for years before Megan and I got together uh, because, you know, being out in the world. Okay. Do you see this apex predator? Do you think she had been also doing it for years, Blessing? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Let me just, all right, hold on, pull this down. Look at this chicks. Oh, wait, not this one. Oh, yeah. So this is Megan Good's relationship history. Let's pull it up. All right. We got Jonathan Majors. Uh, we got Devon Franklin. Oh, this guy. Yep. We got Thomas Jones. Damn. Soja Boy. Wow. <laughs> Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon was Jamie. going through all of them. Man. I know. Nick's been everywhere. He's a ladies man. What can, what can he say? Jamie Foxx. Um, Tyrese Gibson. Oh, this is a little different for her. Joseph Gordon Levide. <laughs> 50 Cent. So again, predatory women. Or you can take this down while I figure out which tab it is. Predatory women. Oh, here it is. Predatory women tend to go to church to find suckers. Yes, they are not looking for a man where they have genuine burning desire for. They are looking for a mark. And let's pull this up. Look, he is bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Look at him right there. That is an apex predator. Both speaking and preaching, telling one thing. There was a time when I was doing something different, and I wanted to reconcile who I was in public and in person, and in private, excuse me. So that's why I decided to wait. And I said, you know what? I'm going to wait until marriage after I wasn't waiting. And then Megan and I got together and found out she had been waiting. Yeah. And Megan, as I understand it, And he believed it. What a simp. 
you've said in the past you knew this was your husband yeah. before he knew. Yeah. How did that, how's that possible? Well, it's really. He was a prey. He was a mark. <laughs> Interesting because we had met four years prior to working on Jumping the Broom. And he was the executive on Jumping the Broom. I was the actress on the film. And I was in the tail end of kind of um, not so great relationship. Not because of the person we just weren't right for each other. But um, I really got a chance to get to know him on set. And I thought, man, that's the kind of guy I wish I could marry. And that was it. He's the guy who gives you the job. That's, that's all I thought about it. And then I got back from Nova Scotia filming. Typically, when women say that guy is marriage material, it means she views him as long-term security and she doesn't have that genuine burning desire for, typically. And I was like, man, Lord, I'm at a really hard place, like at a standstill in my life, and I'm really hitting a wall. What am I supposed to be doing? And the first thing that God told me was that it was time to get out of that relationship. The second thing that God told me was that it was time to be celibate. And the third thing that God told me was that Devon was my husband. And I was like, now what does celibacy do? Now, this is not me talking about morality. This is not me saying moral, immoral. This is just me looking at this. I, I have an economics degree, okay? <laughs> celibacy generally for women means they're raising the price on a used product. And the only men that, wor that works on is men we will never be attracted to. Because again, the relationship is on her terms, typically. Well, I was just okay. gonna add right there as well. She said, God told me this man is my husband. Now God is not a liar, because from what I know, these people are not together anymore. So if God said it, why are you living? <laughs> That's what I gotta so say. So she should be struck down. She lied there. Yeah, she's hearing voices. A lot of these women are just hearing voices. <laughs> Tell me, was that Devon was my husband? And I was like, okay. And I was like, <laughs> so, and I didn't know him that well. And I was like, so what do I do, Lord? And God was just like, nothing. Just work on yourself. So I spent the next nine months um, healing, working on damage from childhood, growing up in the business, things you just go through in life. Now, what does healing mean, guys? What do women typically mean when they say healing? All right, red flag. <laughs> and about five months in, I started telling friends and family that Devon was my husband. They were like, oh, really? They were like, does he know that? And I'm like, no. They're like, so you had so not crazy. even gone on a date? No, no, didn't know anything about it. I didn't talk to him. Because this could have gone real creepy. Uh, yeah. She's <laughs> <laughs> she telling everybody, and somebody says, Devon, she, I don't know I don't her. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just at the, at the time, I was an executive um, for Sony yeah. working on the movie. And she was one of the stars. So I was yeah. like, hey, you know what? If that's the talent. I'm the executive. Like, I would never cross that line. Uh, and also, it's Megan Good. So I'm thinking, like, yo, like, that's just, you know, Megan Good, the stars, the moon. You know, they're all in another stratosphere. And so when it came to the reality that, like, wait a minute, at the Jumping the Broom premiere, nine months after. Now, just listening to him talk. She's been with 50 Cent Nick Cannon. Do you think this guy can entertain her? Again, that's, that's why the, the crazy exes are a pretty bad sign in general, right? Ladies, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. Please don't cry about this, okay? He was done. We started talking, and it felt like, wait, I think Megan is interested in me. Oh, meanwhile, I had told all my girlfriends, I was like, yeah. meet my husband tonight, and everyone's like, okay, so we're following him around the party like teenage schoolgirls, like looking at him and stuff. And then we went out two weeks later, and then yeah. literally... From the time of going out, it was 10 months later we were engaged and two months later we were married. So yeah. over the span of, what, 13 months, you yes. were yeah. celibate in the relationship. Yes. Um, you make this pledge to each other, you make it to God, but we're all humans and our bodies react sure. to things. Absolutely. So did you avoid kissing? Did you, a massage was out of... <laughs> so women that are actually into you can't get their hands off you. Red flag. Red flag. Uh, because th these things, I'm just being honest. Okay, Come on, we're all you're getting all of it. Come on, Tamara. I mean, you know my husband. Yes, I do. Right, my, my husband, like, massaged my shoulder. I'm like, hey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe not as often because we have a baby now, but hey, you know. But it's like, how did you avoid triggers? You know, it's one of the things we talk about, you know, in the book. We talk about the power of delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. We live in a time where everybody wants everything now. Mm 
But there's a lot of value when we just wait and sit back and say, you know what, I'm going to delay this because if I do, I'll get what I actually want when it's time for it. So for us, we had to know our triggers. Now, that means some nights we could not Netflix and chill, okay? We couldn't do it. We <laughs> Did you cuddle? Some you didn't days, stay in the same but house. every day was different. No, we no, had separate houses. We yeah. didn't move in until... Uh, and you didn't have any sleepovers? No, we, we had sleepovers. Oh. Yeah. But again, you got to know your boundaries. You got to know your triggers. So pillow in the middle? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Really? It just depends. It just depends. Like, depends on how strong you felt on that. Yeah, okay. You guys get the idea. So we have the simps, the pimps, and the born-again virgins. Now, how does this relate to Nala? So I want to give a couple disclaimers before I go into the Nala situation. I am not bitter. I keep hearing on X that Pearl is just so dang bitter. Look at, I live a good life. I learned to, I learned to cook like a, a pasta today. I was very proud of it. You know, I just, I, I have a great, I get the best job in the world. There is no part of me that is jealous of a chick that is getting railed by two dudes on the internet. <laughs> Call me old fashioned, all right? It's just not my thing. What irks me is us propping up these false prophets that clearly have done no work to change because I see where all of this leads. And what this leads to it's a bunch of gay flags in the church, a bunch of wokeness. This is the beginning. This is the slippery slope. You know, the church is lost because men appeal to women at all costs. That's why we have gay flags in the church. That's why we have BLM signs in church. That's why women's groups are overtaken by feminist women. I want everyone to pay attention to the Nala situation. For those of you that don't know, Nala is the former OF model that Michael Knowles interviewed and simped for that entire interview. I like you, Michael, but I'm sorry that was simping. I, I don't think you did your homework before that interview. So no offense, but I got to be honest. This is what happens. I, I want you guys to pay attention because this is what happens in churches across America. Former prostitutes or similar are paraded around without a second thought or even answering tough questions. Yet when Steven Crowder was labeled an abuser, nobody even questioned the woman except for me and a few others. So when it's a woman, they believe her at all costs. And when it's a man, even a man in the conservative community that was objectively a net good, They were still willing to crucify him for women. Pay attention because the Daily Wire is simping. The trad feminists defend the sisterhood at all costs. And the innocent man is kicked from the congregation, Crowder, where the scorned woman is welcomed into the group. The traditional conservative community excommunicated, excommunicated Crowder and welcomed his wife and now Nala. Now you may be thinking that Pearl, this is media, not the church, but I assure you the same patterns are common across the country. It is the same pattern. Kick the man out, defend the woman. The woman gets no questions. And anybody that questions the woman is attacked. I was attacked mercilessly for defending Crowder and asking tough questions to his wife. And I have been attacked mercilessly for going after Nala and asking tough questions that she still has not answered. And by the way, this will not just happen in the church. I see this happening in other industries as well. It is the same pattern. The latest, latest is politics opening its arms to former sex workers. Back to Nala. I am actually tired of talking about this chick, but because I broke the story originally, and was offered, and, and, and one of the few that offered pushback, I feel as though I need to stick with it. Many will say that I am obsessed, but by that logic, you are also obsessed with the feminists that you dunk on 24 seven. I am covering this story because it pisses me off that you are also gullible 
and have false prophets that use Christianity like it is the latest fashion trend. I find this offensive and disgusting. Anyone asking questions about this matter is told they need prayers. They didn't God hard enough. It is just a roundabout way of them saying they are more virtuous and holier than you. Yet we wonder why men are leaving the church in droves, but none of you will say anything. None of you. None of you will stand up for Crowder who's getting kicked out, and none of you will ask questions to the predatory women that come into church. Well, conservatives, here is your answer. This is why the 1950s aren't coming back. This is why none of your fighting degeneracy has worked because you prop up OF trad chicks, trad OF chicks, and kick out the virtuous men like Steven Crowder. This may have happened in the media, but I promise and assure you it is happening across the country. So Nala is trying to reason her way out of, so as we already know, Nala has not deleted her OF. They are trying to make it work around to make it seem like she has, but every time the rubber meets the road. It is the same thing that we have said. So I am going to bring up Reclaim Your Throne. I am going to message him this link now. I should have sent it earlier. And I'm going to show you guys the TikTok in the meantime that Nala posted. Tell me when he's in. Uh, let me find this one. Let me find it one second. Where is this video? Mm. Where is that simp? There's this simp on Twitter and they always look the same. They always have like light faces and like the testosterone is gone from their face. It is, eh. where is this guy on oh, the mentions? Here we go. Oh, wait. Oh, I quote tweeted it. I can get it. Oh, I think I'm going to read to Nick's um, take on this because I thought it was good. I'm not going to read the end because I don't agree with that. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> if anything, the former OF girl Nala is just demonstrating how similar female influencers are to corn stars. As a corn star, sexually interested men paid her money for video content to use for a degenerate sexual fantasy. As a trad influencer, sexually interested men pay her money for video content to use for the trad fantasy. If the former OF slut deactivated her social media, donated some or all of her corn money, and announced she was retiring, I don't think anyone would question her credibility. But what people are noticing is that she seems to be merely trading one form of celebrity status and male attention for another. How has anything really changed? You make a fortune degrading yourself and scandalizing men, but you changed your mind today. So now you get to keep the money and have your respectability instantly restored or even increased. Where is the penance? That's my question, guys. Where is the penance? If Nala took her hair out, took off the makeup, I don't know, did something. You know, the Mormons go away for like three years. They go to like a praying camp or something. Anything, my Lord, other than let me start a God clothing line. Are you crazy? Okay. Um, so now, oh, where's the penance? From the outside looking in, it looks like she's cashing her chips to hit the Tradcon circuit. She might as well make as much money without having to put out. Win-win. In other cultures, <laughs> um, her, her male, I'm not going to read that part. Um, in our female brain society, she can now ride off into the sunset and be congratulated for not whoring herself out anymore. Fitting that, <laughs> um, Michael Knowles, how my, fitting how Michael Knowles conducted the interview too. Where are the men? She should get 
A rap on the beak, not a party. Exactly. Exactly. Is he up yet or no? Let me just see where he's at. Oh, my tank hopped in the car. That's cool. Okay, how long? Okay, so let me go back and do this one. Oh, Lord. Oh, here it is. Oh, shit. Oh, thank you, Victor Miller, for the PayPal. Guys, if you want to support the show, we're waiting a little bit for Reclaim Your Throne to come on. Feel free to send a cash app, pearly things, P-E-A-R-L-Y-T-H-I-N-G-S, and a Venmo just underscore pearly things. We also have some new merch that's actually very fitting for this. Um, for, do, do we have the merch up? Or do we, did you make a graphic for it or anything? Okay. Well, we have our She Belongs to the Streets merch. It's got the future thing on it. <laughs> so if you guys want, you know, feel free to get that. Then you can also sign up for our memberships. Today, we're not doing the show on the Audacity Network. Um, we had some tech issues. The app is coming. It is coming. Um, but, you know, guys, I just get tired of this stuff. I, I get tired of over and over and over again, people getting bamboozled. Look, I'm a fan of Ye. He is goaded. He's the goat. But... The reason everyone was so disappointed now that his wife is walking around naked because everybody believed him when he made a God album without having him put in any works. I actually don't have a problem with him making an album per se, but when you start hailing someone as, as repented savior, you know, when I, when I want in a pastor, I want to look at someone that's better than me. Now, I understand pastors can't be perfect, all right? I certainly don't want a woman. No, I, I mean, uh, YouTube, I mean, I'm going to take that back. Uh, that protected class is a totally okay, you know, doing that. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, <laughs> you know, but I want to look up to somebody and say, you know, they've had 20, 30 years of living a very moral life. They are the perfect person to teach. Not, I was getting screwed by two men last year and talking about how I love to cheat. So let me go on all the talk shows <laughs> and claim to be changed with doing zero work. As Christians, guys, we have to look at this and say, it makes us look stupid. It makes us look silly. Where are the men with discernment? You know, that's something that naturally comes to men much better than women. Men can see through BS so much quicker than us women. It's why you'll see women write love letters to serial killers. It's why you will see women make stupid decisions. Frick, we're protected class. This has got to get taken off of YouTube eventually. This this will go. <laughs> ah, friggin' A. But it, it's why you guys see women being, making stupid decisions. Discernment is supposed to come from men. But the problem is when men defer to women, you get this nonsense like interviewing a corn star. Why did Crowder not get the same benefit of the doubt? Why are you trad con women so quick to call Crowder an abuser? And <laughs> why do the trad con women, they are so quick to call Crowder an abuser, yet they are believing this chick? That was getting screwed by two guys last year. Guys, these are just facts. These are just facts. Okay, let me...
pull up one more thing. Hold on. Mm -hmm. All right, let me pull up. All right, again, I've showed this video before, but I want to. What is love? I want to show you guys. It's like the same thing. Here you go. Pull it up, will you? Well, for me, my father left when I was two, and I was surrounded by aunts and uncles and even my grandmother who was divorced. So for me, love didn't last. Love was temporary, and it wasn't a forever thing. So that carried into my relationships. All right, do you notice how she's doing the same thing Nala did? It's like the same girl, different body. Same girl, different body. Heavy makeup, maybe not as heavy as Nala, but same thing. When I was about a sophomore in high school, I had my first serious relationship. And after a while of dating, we thought we were in love and everything was great. And slowly, the pressure started to set into the relationship. And it came to the point where he said, well, girl, if you really love me, if you truly love me, you'd prove it to me. You'd show me just how much you love me. So I needed advice. So I went to my girlfriends and I said, well, he kind of wants to do this with me and he wants to do that. And they said, well, <laughs> What's wrong with you? Everybody's doing it. You love him, right? And I thought, well, yeah, I love him. So at the age of 15, I lost my virginity, thinking it was gonna cause this huge, great emotional bond between us and we'd be on cloud nine and so in love. And in all actuality, eventually it destroyed any love we had in that relationship and all respect was just thrown out the window. Because if I couldn't even respect my own body, how is he supposed to respect it? And after a while of dating, it seemed like he didn't want to spend time with me anymore. He was basically spending the time with my body. And when a girl is being used. It's the same thing. It's like the same thing in a different body. And I am so tired of this. This chick was at my high school giving speeches. Now it's worse. It used to just be a chick with no evidence of the wholeness. They just go and talk about it. Now we have sex, like this, this is where, this was the, the chastity speaker when I was in high school. Now we have sex workers, my God, freaking A. Reclaim your throne is here now. Oh, he is. Um, it, it's like the same, same shit, different day. Okay, um, I want to play the, okay, we can go back to that in a little bit. But I want to play the video that was put on TikTok. Absolutely. So, guys, last time, Reclaim Your Throne was here last show. And he has done a great job of exposing Nala this whole time. Of going through the ins and outs of all the receipts he had of her not deleting her OnlyFans. Raising her prices four times. And Nala put out a video. Nala, one, got his account deleted. And put out a video saying that we're just big meanie liars, I guess. A couple things I want to address is my OnlyFans. I know a lot of you keep saying, oh, oh it's and by up, the way, it's up. It, it okay, wait, hold on. So everyone said I'm a liar. Everyone said, because we said the things I want to we said that the OnlyFans is not up, it's on restricted mode. This is my OnlyFans. I know a lot of you keep saying, oh, it's up, it's up. It is up. How do you have a video confirming what we said? And then, you, and now I'm, we're lying. Now insert excuse. We're going to, here's the excuse. I am waiting and I will show you a screenshot here really fast. I have tried deleting. Fast, not slow. Convenient. Okay. It is in the deletion process, but OnlyFans doesn't work like a snap of your fingers. It doesn't just get deleted. So again, I'm going to show you this screenshot really fast. Okay, so I emailed OnlyFans, and this is what they said to me. Uh, the account cannot be deleted immediately as long as there are active paid subscribers. Once you initiate the account removal process, it will no longer be possible to subscribe to your profile or renew existing subscriptions. 
uh, blah, 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 blah. So this is what it says. You can screenshot it, whatever, but I have. Date, date, I don't see a date. My absolute best to get it deleted. I'm trying to move it up the ladder in OnlyFans so that it can just get like completely taken down. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up for you guys because I am trying. No one can subscribe to the page um, and everything is completely taken down. There are no posts, no messaging. Absolutely nothing is going on on the page. So I wanted to clear that up for you guys because I do believe that you guys deserve an answer because yes, it's still up, but you can't do anything with it and no one in there can do anything in there. So praise God for that. Okay, bring him up. Bring him up. Banned on X, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they took me out, man. It's crazy. Why do you why do you think you were banned? Uh well, they gave the uh you know the very vague excuse of oh hateful conduct. And whatnot, but I just think that because I was exposing the lies and um, I was really putting out the information, especially when it comes to the uh, management company, Creators Inc. and Andrew Bachman. I know they have a lot of pull on social media, so uh, I, I think they just, uh, you know, made a phone call, got my account knocked off, and you know, it is what it is. That that's just what they do because they want to control the narrative. It's all about marketing it's it, it's all about the campaign and i was putting a wedge in the campaign and, and there were people who were starting to come around and then my most recent post exposing the telegram um that most recent post actually gained some traction and as it was gaining traction they knocked it off and one thing i i also had people you know who were followers of instagram and my twitter and they come to my instagram and they said ever since i put out that tweet the telegram was not active anymore. So like they stopped sending content and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's still there, but they stopped doing stuff. So I, I genuinely think that it was an account, you know, that was probably being uh, used by either her, her management team, something like that. So, mm. um, you know, I, I think that I was really hitting the, uh, the mark and, and they couldn't have that for their marketing campaign. Yeah, and what do you say, you know, the, the trad simps have seen this video and they, they think you were wrong. I mean, she couldn't delete her OnlyFans. Yeah, I, I just, not, I'm just not buying it because the longest that you can subscribe on someone's OnlyFans, I think is 90 days. So, I mean, if, if we're talking 90 days from the last subscriber and she uh, deleted the account on the day that she says she deleted her account during her baptism, um, that same day, then she didn't delete the account till 120 days after, right before the Michael Knowles interview. So how was she able to time it out so successfully 24 hours before the Michael Knowles interview, it gets deleted, but then she's giving other, other people this lame excuse that it couldn't be deleted until the last sub and all this kind of BS. I mean, it, it, it was just, it's just BS because she still had all her content on there um, up until I actually put that first expose out. And the reason why I did that is because, um, you know, she was going viral on Twitter again about the baptism, all that stuff. And I had covered, I had covered her baptism when it actually happened. And I, I put out that video on new year's day. And, uh, you know, I, I had already called it out and stuff like that. And, and it's on my YouTube channel now. And I had called it out, but I thought it was a dead story. Then come uh, February, I just see like post after post have a post of, oh, you know, this OF girl was converted and, and it was a real genuine marketing campaign that I had recognized before due to my knowledge and understanding of the OFM OnlyFans management business. So I was like, hmm, this is weird. And I put out the first expose um, tweet. And then ever since then, she's been like, more on trying to delete the content from the only fans. But before then she made no effort to delete the page or delete any content from it. And then when I and she got the page up, then she had the parts a few times and all this kind of stuff. And she was playing games. She she was literally playing games. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is she confirmed what we said. 
And all the simps are trying to make it like she didn't confirm what we said. I mean, you, right. we, she said that it's not deleted. And there is, she is confirming it is not deleted. I mean, she puts in some lame right. excuse. Um, but why are you preaching before you have all your ducks in a row? Right. Exactly. And, it, you know, it, it, it's crazy because people are saying, well, X is the most free speech, da da da, whatever. But I mean, it's just like any other social media company. You can get banned. I, I, I guess I wasn't banned. I was permanently suspended. I don't know what that means because a suspension is is temporarily or or you know even sometimes indefinitely. But there is an end date to a suspension, whereas a ban is like, okay, you're done. Mm -hmm. But I'm permanently suspended, which makes no sense. That's a contradiction in and of itself. So, you know, X has some work to do as well, um, because if you're exposing if, if, if I'm putting out a tweet that is just straight lining up facts, facts after fact after, after facts, and I have to use video or picture evidence to convey the point, that's just journalism. It, I mean, it, <laughs> and they're suspending people who are reporting on this story. And I think it's an important story because. A lot of people are getting deceived and a lot of people are getting scammed and a lot of people are going to the OF and going to the Telegram and buying content and all this kind of stuff. When meanwhile, she is bringing in a new demographic uh, to her um, to her business. So, and now she's trying to uh, she's trying to sell like Christian T-shirts or something like that. Like, well, I mean, who's going to rock the gear? Who's going to rock the apparel? Like who's copping that merch? I mean, it's crazy. Well, and I don't understand why Christians should be outraged by this because she's grifting their religion. She's grifting God. How how are they not offended by it? Yeah. Why are they dying with this girl to the grave? I, I don't understand it when none of them stood up for Steven Crowder, a, a guy who did right. everything on paper right. It's like the man is the abuser and, and they believe that. But, right. but and even no yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, even when that Steven Crowder story first came out, I was one of the very few who came in his defense and I yeah. did a whole live stream on it. It's still up on my channel and, and I clipped it up and everything and turned into shorts and all that kind of stuff because, you know, I just knew what was going on. And it's just like that foresight. And that's that's where that judgment comes from. And, and a lot of these uh, online Christians that say, oh, you can't judge, you can't judge. Well, if you don't use your judgment and discernment to decipher what is real and what is not, then, you know, you're going to end up walking, walking that, that broad walk. And I mean, you're going to be fooled and you're going to be deceived. And, and there's nothing that, you know, you can do about it because you didn't use any things to this. Uh, you broke up a little bit. What did you say? Oh, I think he's good. Oh, I, I was just saying, um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to go through a rough patch here, but then I'll be at my computer in like five minutes. But I was just saying, um, it's just who actually are saying you can't judge somebody, but we have to use discernment in order to decipher what is real and what is not. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I, it just blows my mind that conservatives are this stupid. I just, I can't believe it. I mean, these are smart people. They've objectively built a following up. They follow news stories all the time. They know what's going on in the world. But yeah, they think a, a OF model is a credible source. Are you kidding me? Right. But, <laughs> but here's the thing that they're part of the grift too. A lot of these people agreeing with her, they're part of the grift. You know, there's there's a whole bunch of feminists or trad wife Christian females online as well. And they're part of the grip and they probably had passed just like hers, except theirs wasn't exposed due to, you know, the, the lack of the digital age in their time when they was growing up. But a lot of them have the same past and they want to so badly sell this dream that you can be a hoe like a literal pay for play hoe and still get a, a husband at the end of the day. And, and that's what they're selling to Christian men. The Christian men are the ones who are going to, who are going to be, you know, uh, delved out the duty of wifing the hoes. I hope you guys realize that that is the position that they're trying to put you guys in because they know 
that they can play on your religion. They can play on your ideology. They can play on your belief to say, you know, this woman deserves forgiveness. And then uh, I'm not saying she don't deserve forgiveness, but she definitely doesn't deserve a good man to come in and be her husband. You know, I mean, especially a guy who's doing well for himself because he deserves better. It's not so much that she doesn't deserve, but he deserves better. So um, that's what they're trying to sell to Christian men. And I just want Christian men to be aware that, hey, you got you guys are going to be the ones holding the bag because the secular men, the atheist men, they they already kind of understand the game and they're not falling for anything that is, mm. you know, uh, uh, somebody trying to grift off of a religion or ideology. So you guys are the one who is falling for it and y'all are going to be the ones holding the bag, just like the the brother that she, I guess, is now married to. Uh, I mean, I mean, I don't know. They must have did a shotgun wedding because <laughs> it looks it seemed like the elope was quick as hell. Yeah. What do you think? Um, In the beginning of the show, I said that churches tend to be filled with simps, pimps and, and born again virgins. Do you think that's true or false? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, the pimps are in the pulpits, the preachers and the deacons, they have the talk game. And a lot of times, you know, they come from, you know, rough backgrounds and whatnot. And I'm not saying that you can't you know, be reformed, but there, there needs to be some type of boundary and authority into who can teach and who can't, because she, I'm telling you, she's about to go on a, 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 a social media campaign of preaching and, and, and all this type of stuff as if she is an authority. And what she's going to do is she's going to blend in that leftist ideology that she still maintains and 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 she's gonna blend that into her 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 preaching, and I mean it's just gonna be. I, I just think that she's just gonna make a mockery of the faith, and she already has, and a lot of people are falling for it. So yeah, yeah, and and that's what I was trying to point out is that you you let these chicks in, and, and that's why we have the wokeism, the liberal men are bringing that stuff in. It's women, it's the born again yep. virgins, you know. You know, God, God can forgive you, but men don't have to. They don't have to put up with that. Right. That. Right. And, and and it's just it's, it's just not for one. It's not right that we can't call it out and, and you know. Be able to do that with our platforms and, and you get censored and shadow banned for doing so. I mean, it's just it's just wild. Mm hmm. Um, well, thank you for calling in. I'm sorry you got your ex account taken. You see there? Yeah, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, I've been demonetized, shadow banned, all types of stuff. So, you know, I'm used to it. I mean, it is what it is. That That's the social media game. You, there, there really is no free speech. Um, and, you know, hopefully we can get something different into office and, 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 and break up all this social media monopoly stuff. But, you know, I mean, the, the <laughs> free speech is dying and, and it's, it's a sad, it's a sad thing to see, especially online. Um, when that was a, a medium where people could really, you know, just, just, um, conversate and, and, and trade ideas and whatnot. It, it's, it, the, 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 getting really bad so i hope elon does something about it i hope he reinstates my account um but i'm not counting on it and you know i i, I just know how this how this game goes so i'm not you know i, I mean i'm just maneuver in my own way mm -hmm. do you have a new x are you going to make a new x account or you're just going to wait to see with that one uh, I, I'm probably going to wait it out, see what they say on the appeal. And then after that, I might, you know, try and do something else. But, you know, I'm kind of annoyed because I was building up some good traction on, on that account. And now I got to start all over. But, hey, it is what it is. That's the game. Yeah. Well, send me if you make a new one, send it to me. I'll be sure to push it. So I'm sure that people want to keep up. Oh, with yeah, for stuff. sure. For sure. For sure. I appreciate that. Uh, well, thanks for calling in. Do you do you have any other receipts or anything you want to show? Or there's nothing really new, right? Uh, no, there's nothing really new. I put out the telegram, but yeah. I mean that got knocked down. I I don't think I so, can show that was, on here. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't show. That. But the thing was, all all the content in the telegram was censored because that's how they sell it. They 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 showed censored content in the main feed, and then they send you the menu which I showed you guys yesterday. So um, 
Yeah, no, I mean, there's no real new updates. I, I think we just kind of got to sit back and watch, and hopefully, people, other people aren't going to be affected, you know, by trying to speak out on on what she's doing, and mm -hmm. and hopefully, you know, if it's not me, it's somebody else like yourself or whatnot. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. Hey, appreciate you. All right, guys. You see, this is what I'm saying. They listen to the trad concepts will die on this hill. They will die on this hill. So I want to go over my last part of the show. Mm. Oh, let me. Oh yeah, here's another example, guys, of a gospel singer. Okay, let's let's. This isn't the first rodeo. Um, pull this up, blessing. All right, so we got this chick. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in different. Blessing, did things like that, pull this down for a sec. Did things like this happen in Africa? Close, Bill. <laughs> you know, it's not. Here we have another one. A former stripper running for Congress writes about losing a job and work stigma. These people are meant to be shamed, guys. If we don't start shaming this behavior, I. I Again, the, the chastity speaker when I was in high school was this lady who just used to be a hoe in high school. Now we have literal sex workers. Okay, so Jeremy responded to me today. Not to me. Well, I guess to me. So here is the clip we have. Let me pull this up. Past career. Yeah. But I, I, I wasn't, I really... Not only was I not familiar with your uh, past career, yeah. but I, I, I wasn't even really familiar with the story of, you know, your conversion, this yeah. wonderful story. I just wasn't aware of it. I'm interviewing someone, and I mentioned how th there have been a couple people in the chat of my show. So we're talking about people who are full members, who yeah. are commenting every day, who w worked in uh, varying degrees of pornography and mm -hmm. who kind of came out of it. And I was thinking of one person in particular who, uh, you know, I, I've just sort of interacted with in the show and maybe yeah. on Twitter a little bit. And, uh, but this person I was interviewing, Pearl Davis, I, I think she thought I was talking about you. I did. That was it, yep. yes. And so, I got that vibe very heavily but, when I watched the interview. So she never said your name, and I didn't know who you were. Hmm. And but she's saying, oh, that person is a fake. She didn't yeah. really get out. And I'm thinking of this other person. Yes, because she raised her prices four times. She did not delete her account. She is still, because the facts don't back up your religion, Michael. The, the facts, they just don't back up what you're saying. For my chat, I said, I don't know, I think, pretty sure I've followed this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, but what I do just I love know? that you're on such a we're, different we're wavelength. We're talking about totally different things. And then later, I, maybe she or you, someone had posted about this. And I said, oh, it's about this girl. And by the way, the OF model he was talking about that, that he said was a genuine conversion wanted to literally fight me. How stupid can you guys be? No offense, Michael, but I just think he's been with one chick for so long. He has no idea. He's got he's got no idea what's going okay. on. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe she's a fake. Maybe she, I don't know anything about her. Mm. And then, but then I kind of looked into it a little bit. And now we. No, you didn't. You didn't look into it at all. <laughs> Not even a little bit. <laughs> Freaking a. I'm chatting for yeah. you know I don't know ten hours and. Uh, it feels like 10 minutes. It feels like five minutes. Right. And, and uh, you, you seem sincere. You. It totally seems real. So I feel like that's to test the spirits. You know, you, we are asked to test the spirits and look at the fruit of the spirit and not to judge that person. Like a true Christian, a true believer. Yeah, but you need to have, again, as Reclaim Your Throne was saying, you need to have discernment. You know, I, I don't think you should really be bringing predator women that six months ago, we're talking about how they like to make men cheat around married men. 
why would that be a good idea? You might as well bring a guy that used to sell drugs, drugs to children to schools. I mean, just do it. Yeah, bring them to bring them to the kids. Christ will watch and observe and listen and not. Why do I have to listen? Why can't I just think you're full of shit? Why? You're not even supposed to be speaking. You're supposed to be in the back of the church. Jump to a conclusion. Yeah. I had a very big. No, 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 no. I jumped to a conclusion based on your behaviors and what you said. Yep. I wouldn't say issue, but I, I just, I had a, it was a very controversial video that she made about me and I had to just pray. I was, I. That's what they always do. I'll pray for you. I keep, you can take your prayers and shove them up your ass. I don't want them. And, and I think it's even more disingenuous because they use it as a way to say, I am holier than thou. You need God. I am the moral one. Great. You guys are the CEO of God. I don't care. Stop using God as a grift. It's offensive. Christians should be offended by this. It, it is ridiculous that everybody is just sitting back while this happens. I had to pray because I felt like I was getting heated about it, and that wasn't the right attitude to have at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I really wanted to respond more in kindness than anything. That is the like, time to put away Twitter, the, or X now. The moment uh, you start to actually get absolutely. angry, put it away. Put it away. It, was, it wasn't even, I deleted my Twitter. I don't have Twitter. I didn't know I was being spoken about on Twitter at all. I had just watched her YouTube video on mm -hmm. me, and it was, I, I couldn't even finish it because there were so many. It wasn't meant for you, Chica. It wasn't meant for you. Loose ends, and I don't want to say it this way, but lie. No, you confirmed, wait, 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 wait. You confirmed exactly what we said, which is that she did not delete her OF account. That is exactly, you actually confirmed, you, you did the video confirming what we said. Confirmed. Outright lies being said about me that I felt the need to correct, but that was like my flesh. My flesh was yeah. like, oh, right. you know, that's wrong. Like, I, I'm, I don't know why I'm being perceived this way by this woman. And, and Michael, if you did five minutes of research, you, I was right, actually. I was right, word for word. Never spoken to me. I was correct, freaking A. Reached out to me and I am old. Sorry, I've dealt with enough OF models to, to for a lifetime. Why do I have to talk to someone when the evidence is right in front of my face? Now in her eye because of my change, right? And she No, 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 no. See? See right there. This OF models are so manipulative. Had you see that? No, 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 no. Had you deleted your social media, given up your money, and given your life to God, I wouldn't even know who you were. You, can't, you came up to me because I think you're full of shit. And I think you're grifting a religion. Stop using your hooker name say that she's a Catholic. Yeah, I don't know that she... Um... Oh, okay. Now they're about to imply that I am not a real Catholic. I love it. I love it. You know, the corn star is the real Christian. Yep. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. That's the best. A because she said sorry. Yep. To the uh, doctrines of the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. But do you know? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Freaking a. Do you know what doesn't adhere to the doctrine of the Catholic faith? Faith. I don't know. Having sex on the internet, Michael. <laughs> Freaking a. As we discussed, I mean, one can go back and watch the interview. Yeah. But uh, at the very least, she said this thing. I, I really don't mean to beat up on her for it because a lot of people say this, but <laughs> they said like, "Look, I was raised Catholic. I went to Catholic school," and. But, you know, in the... But I've seen exactly what's in the Catholic Church, and it is the same thing that's in any other church, and I will not peddle lies just because I'm biased and I prefer Catholic. It is still simps, pimps, and the born-again virgins. It, 
you ever hear that preface, you, you can be 100% certain you were about to hear the least Catholic thing you ever heard in your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Now listen here, I met the nuns once when I was in eighth grade, and uh, so anyway. She, but I, I was I, raised I, as a monk, yeah. but. <laughs> yeah, you see, so then, you know, I, I did ratio him here. All right, but now Jeremy weighs in. This simping, guys, please make it stop. I like you guys. I think you're good people, I swear. So I don't want you to take this the wrong way. But my Lord, I don't know if this Nala person is a sincere believer or not. Jeremy, did you look at my receipts? They were right under the video. They were right under the video. We've gone through so many receipts. Did you read them? No, okay. Maybe she's a fraud. Maybe this is an elaborate troll or grift. Maybe she believes what she believes, but she is actually just a confused young woman. Look, she's like 23. My grandma had like five kids by then. Nope, nope, nope. The young and dumb card doesn't work as she clearly has been here, here to four. Maybe everyone celebrating her is naive. No, stupid actually, stupid. Yeah, sorry. Maybe it will all blow up and damage the faith of her supporters. I don't know. Maybe we could look at previous cases. <sighs> Maybe she will make Christianity look foolish. Maybe all of that evil and more will occur. But even if it does, it will pale in com I couldn't believe this part, the simping. It will pale in comparison to the evil of those who root against her salvation or declare that there is no salvation possible for women like her. So obviously this is quote tweeting a video where I'm talking and he's trying to paint me, which this is very disingenuous as saying, her having sex with two men on the internet at the same time, probably selling nude content to underage people considering she was on Twitch and TikTok. Getting men to cheat on their wives and then putting her as a Christian spokesperson around married men and if Pearl says, I don't know if this is real, guys. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good idea. That in your eyes is worse. Because I don't believe her based on the facts. I thought you guys cared about facts. Some people minimize the grace of God. By the way, I believe in God. I believe Jesus saves. I've seen genuine conversions, but I'm not stupid. And a genuine conversion doesn't look like a podcast tour. Okay. Cheapen the work of his son and invite judgments upon themselves. Nope, but we need discernment for a God who can forgive Nala might just be able to forgive you. But a God whose judgment is greater than his mercy has no use for Nala for the rest of us. Let us rejoice that such forgiveness is possible and pray that her salvation. And so basically they do the same thing. Pearl didn't God hard enough. You know what guys, you are the CEO of God. You guys are holier than everyone else. Congratulations. Um, but I still don't believe her. And I, I think sometimes you can take this down. I think sometimes because you want your faith to be right so much, you guys are willing to believe anything. And I'm not. So, you know, I've, I've interviewed enough sex workers to know they're not deceived. It's not their childhood. It is not that they are coerced or forced into doing it. They love it. They enjoy the attention and they do it for attention. So I think you should be more discerning when you're bringing in sex workers on your show, have them do something, freaking anything, some penance. 
but maybe I'm the bad guy. You know what, guys? Let me know what you think in the comments. Pearl's evil, evil, evil. Please sign up to the audacitynetwork.com. That's the audacitynetwork.com. We want to defund this simping. We got to defund it. We are the first network that is funded 100% by the people, for the people, no big donors, no nothing. If you can, please get the yearly membership. That would be incredibly helpful to us. I love you guys. I'll talk to you next time.